Here are nine countries that border the Baltic Sea. But recently, global attention has focused on just two of them, Germany and Denmark. Why? Because nestled between these two nations is the site of one of the most ambitious infrastructure projects in European history. If you sail through this area, you'll notice something unusual. Artificial land formations, newly carved out channels leading into the sea, and at times, as many as 70 ships scattered across the horizon. Not exactly your average maritime traffic. These vessels weren't there for sightseeing. They were part of a massive operation that involved digging up more than 76 million cubic feet of soil and rock from the seabed. So what's going on here? It's all part of the Femmer Belt Fixed Link, a 10 billion euros mega project that's not just rewriting engineering records, but also transforming how Europe connects. Off the coast of Germany and Denmark, two entirely new harbors have been constructed, each capable of handling nearly 100,000 tons of raw materials per week. An enormous production plant, covering roughly 11 million square feet, has also sprung up. All of this is to make way for a tunnel, but not just any tunnel. This project is building what will soon be the world's longest immersed combined road and rail tunnel, a direct connection between the German island of Fehmarn and Denmark's Lolland Island. Up until now, crossing between the two meant relying on a ferry, a process that involved queuing up, boarding, and sitting through a 45-minute ride across the strait. And that's on a good day. Storms, strong winds, or fog could easily delay service by hours. So the idea of a permanent, fixed link has been on the drawing board for decades, since at least the 1990s. Initially, the concept was to construct a 12-mile cable-stayed bridge with a four-lane highway and two electrified railway tracks. The design was dramatic, featuring four giant pylons, each nearly 920 feet tall, and three central spans, each stretching 2,375 feet. If built, it would have set world records for the longest spans on a combined road rail bridge. Construction was supposed to begin with the goal of opening in 2018. The Danish company Fremern AS was awarded the contract to develop the project. But then came a major pivot. In 2010, after extensive studies and engineering assessments, Fremern AOS concluded that a tunnel would be the better option. The reason? Fewer technical risks and a more predictable construction process. The seabed's geology with its challenging mix of soft clay and hard limestone, made the bridge option far more complex and risky. Plus, the cost difference between the bridge and the tunnel was surprisingly small, 5.2 billion versus 5.5 billion euros. Construction time wasn't drastically different either, 5.9 years for the bridge versus 6.5 years for the tunnel. So the plan shifted. The tunnel became the official design. The tunnel, once complete, will stretch 11 miles, about 18 kilometers, and carry both road and rail traffic. It will consist of two double-lane motorways, two electrified railway tracks, and a service tunnel in the center. To support such a massive structure, construction had to start not just with digging, but with building the facilities required to produce and transport the enormous materials needed. That's where the gigantic manufacturing plant comes in. Built near the Danish town of Rabihavn on Lolland, this facility is the largest of its kind in the world. Inside, six production lines churn out the precast concrete elements that will form the tunnel. Each segment is a monster in its own right, 712 feet long, 131 feet wide, and 33 feet high, and they weigh a staggering 73,500 tons, just shy of a fully loaded cruise ship. In total, 79 of these standard tunnel segments will be needed. On top of that, special segments will be created to house technical equipment and emergency access systems. And since transporting these massive tunnel elements from distant locations would be logistically impossible and prohibitively expensive, the production plant was strategically built just a few miles from the actual tunnel site. Even the harbors were purpose-built to receive raw materials like gravel, sand, cement, and steel, capable of handling tens of thousands of tons weekly. The German side at Putt Garden also got its own smaller port to support the construction effort. By 2024, Dredging operations were in full swing. Ships of every kind filled the Femmern belt. Cutter suction dredgers, trailing suction hopper dredgers, and specialized stone clearance vessels. Their mission was to dig an 11-mile trench between Fehmarn and Lolland. The trench measured up to 164 feet wide and almost 50 feet deep. The seabed's natural conditions were tough, ranging from soft clay to hard limestone, but the specialized fleet handled it all. Rather than dumping the excavated material, Engineers decided to reuse it. The soil and rock were transported to a designated area off Rodbyhaven to create 741 acres of new land. 
This reclaimed land will eventually become a mix of natural habitat and recreational zones, complete with beaches, parks, and trails. With the trench now complete and reinforced with gravel, the next monumental step begins, laying down the tunnel sections. Entrances to the tunnel have already been constructed on both Laland and Famar. These massive portals serve as gateways for the submerged structure that will rest beneath the sea. Transporting and positioning each tunnel section is no small task. Each segment will be attached to floating pontoons, then guided into place by tugboats. This delicate process, known as immersion, won't be done remotely. It will be operated from a control room located on one of the pontoons. A team of 22 people will oversee the process, using high-precision underwater cameras and positioning systems to guide the section into the trench with an accuracy margin of just half an inch. Once each section is perfectly placed, large rubber gaskets, engineered to last 120 years, will be installed between them to ensure watertight seals. Then, layers of soil will be placed back over the entire tunnel, burying it beneath the seabed. In the end, this will be a tunnel that is both underwater and underground. But if installing just one tunnel segment takes up to 40 hours, how long will the whole project take to complete? That's the million euro question. When plans were first floated in 2012, the goal was to open the tunnel by 2021. A few years later, the date was pushed to 2024, then 2028. Finally, in 2020, the official opening date was set for 2029. Many are eagerly awaiting that year because the benefits of this tunnel will be enormous. Travel time will be slashed dramatically. What is currently a 45-minute ferry ride will become a 10-minute drive through a modern tunnel. Even better, high-speed trains will cross the same route in just 7 minutes, reaching speeds of up to 124 miles per hour. Zoom out on the map, and the bigger picture becomes clear. The tunnel isn't just about connecting Feymarn and Lolland. It's about reshaping transportation across Northern Europe. Once completed, it will create a direct link between Scandinavia and Central Europe. Freight trucks, passenger vehicles, and trains will be able to travel seamlessly from Copenhagen all the way to Hamburg, reducing congestion, cutting emissions, and boosting economic ties. It will also strengthen the Trans-European Transport Network, TEN-T, the EU's plan for integrating infrastructure across member states. In short, the Femmer Belt Tunnel is more than a regional project. It's a continental game changer, and it's breaking records along the way. When finished, it will hold the title for the world's longest immersed tunnel, the longest combined road and rail tunnel, the longest underwater road tunnel, and the second deepest underwater concrete tunnel ever built. It's not just a feat of engineering, it's a symbol of ambition, collaboration, and the future of European connectivity. From blueprint to reality, the Femmer Belt Fixed Link is a marvel in motion, and as the countdown to 2029 continues, it's already shaping up to be one of the defining infrastructure projects of our era.